Southern Kentucky man facing theft charges after police say he stole a baby ferret, a ferret that has now been returned safe and sound. A Central Kentucky house went up in flames tonight. What we've learned about the investigation. Governor Bevin claims a Kentucky Planned Parenthood clinic has been performing abortions illegally. How the clinic is responding. This is WKYT News at 11. Good evening to you. An unusual theft at a Madison County store caught on tape. Tonight, police have arrested a man they say stole a baby ferret. Police say that 20-year-old Richard Lovell stole the animal from a Berea pet store earlier this month. Tonight, the ferret is back at the store. Phil Pendleton tells us how social media helped police crack the case. It's our top story at 11. They're really sleepy. Only nine to ten weeks old, but already this little creature has had quite the adventure, but not the good kind. You wouldn't imagine somebody would steal an animal like a ferret, especially a baby ferret. If that's what police say the two people in this video are seen doing, taking the tiny animal by stuffing her into a jacket. The crime happened back on January 12th. The pet store owner quickly put it on his Facebook page and people responded. That's what did it. I mean, you know, if we hadn't had the video, they would, they would have never been able to find out who it was. Police say the man seen taking the ferret is 20 year old Richard Lovell of London. Once the video went viral on Facebook, the ferret was returned, although she was in very poor health. And she was really dirty, she was covered in fleas. So I don't know where she was kept, but it was definitely not a good place. Richard Lovell was charged with theft by unlawful taking under $500. He was arrested by Kentucky State Police in Laurel County. Arrest warrants have been issued for a second person seen in that video. From what I've heard from the public, they've been causing problems for for you know the area really. Lichen says the animals require special care, which he says he doubts the thieves or possibly even their buyer knew much about. She probably ate for a solid 10 minutes when we got her back. The ferret will stay at the store for another week before she's ready for adoption in Madison County. She's much happier now. Phil Pendleton, WKYT. And police say they're looking for a 19 year old they say was with Lovell during that theft. They also charged Lovell with unlawful transaction with a minor. New tonight, firefighters trying to figure out what caused this, a fire that destroyed a Bourbon County home. This eyewitness video from Jay shows the house in flames. The fire started just before 8 tonight near the intersection of 10th and Miller Streets in Millersburg. Firefighters say the house had been abandoned. No one was injured in the fire. Multiple fire departments were called in to battle the flames. Tonight, Lexington firefighters say four arsons in one neighborhood are connected. In the last week, firefighters say two fires were set at the Jennifer Place apartments on Jennifer Road. Neither caused much damage. Another fire was set at a nearby bus stop. And last night, firefighters say someone set a fire at the Old Continental Inn. No one was injured in any of those fires. So far, no one has been arrested. Tonight, a Louisville Planned Parenthood clinic has agreed to not perform any abortions for now. This comes after Governor Bevin accused it of performing them illegally. Today, the governor talked to WKYT about his claims. Monique Blair is at the live desk for us with the very latest. Monique? Well, Amber, Planned Parenthood says it applied for an abortion facility license in November with the Office of the Inspector General. But yesterday, that office wrote a letter to the clinic demanding them to stop performing abortions. The letter says this is because two agreements that were submitted with Planned Parenthood of Louisville's application were incomplete. Planned Parenthood, which is not authorized to perform abortions in Kentucky, Kentucky, is not licensed or authorized to do so, has been doing so, we found out yesterday, uh, for some weeks now. Uh, we shut that down. Friday afternoon, Planned Parenthood of Indiana and Kentucky Chief Operating Officer Susanna Overholt responded in a letter to the Office of the Inspector General, saying in part, quote, we will refrain from performing any abortion procedures until your office has conducted a survey of the facility, end quote. Also in that letter saying, quote, we are committed to full compliance with all applicable licensing regulations and began providing services only after receiving assurance from your office in emails dated December 1st and December 7th that it would be appropriate while we awaited a survey, end quote. Their argument is that they had applied for a license and they figured that was good enough. But they know fully that that was not. They never got a response. Uh, they are not licensed. 
Now, the letter from the Office of the Inspector General says it will continue to review Planned Parenthood's application once the proper agreements are submitted. At the live desk, Monique Blair, WKYT. Monique, thank you. In a statement tonight, Governor Bevin said he's glad Planned Parenthood, quote, acknowledged it has no legal authority for its actions. And you can see Governor Bevin's full interview on Kentucky Newsmakers with Bill Bryant Sunday morning at 6 on WKYT or Sunday morning at 10 on the CW Lexington. A jury has recommended a Scott County woman spend 30 years in prison for killing her boyfriend. Last night, the same jury convicted Melinda Turner of murder. Police say that she stabbed Maxwell Pomeroy in 2010 at a Georgetown home. On the stand, Turner claimed she was physically and sexually assaulted before the murder. But the jury still convicted her. Pomeroy's parents say they finally have some closure. At one point in time, we decided as a family that the goal was not revenge, was not, you know, making Mindy pay. It was about keeping her off the streets so that another mother and father and family has to deal with what we've dealt with. Turner will be formally sentenced on March 4th. Prosecutors say because she is a persistent felony offender, it will hurt her chances of getting parole in the coming years. New tonight, police have arrested a man accused of breaking into a Fayette County judge's home. The Russell County Sheriff's Office says investigators caught 18-year-old Alfonso Morales today. They say they found him hiding in a closet at his brother's apartment near Jamestown. Police say he broke into Fayette Circuit Judge James Ishmael's home last September. Police charged Morales with burglary. They also arrested his brother on a drug charge. New tonight, police are looking for two men they say broke into a Bell County grocery store through the roof. It happened overnight at the Save a Lot in Pineville. The Bell County Sheriff's Office says the two men cut holes in the roof and dropped down into the building. They say the men then stole a safe from the store's office. Police later found the safe nearby, but all of the money inside was gone. This has definitely been a plan burglary. They've done a lot of scoping of the business, we believe. Uh, definitely had some prior intel before going into the store. Police say this is the third burglary in recent years at the grocery store. Some people in Lexington will be working out all night to help others. We'll explain in seven minutes. Rolling our way into a much warmer weekend across central and eastern Kentucky, but that warm air could cause some problems as we roll into the first few days of February. I'm tracking the potential for severe thunderstorms of all things in just a moment. To stand for Kentucky in a weather capacity is a huge responsibility for me because I feel like our climate is so unique and it can lead to so many different things. When weather conditions get dangerous and we call a severe weather day, I'm standing for everyone in Kentucky who can hear my voice at that moment. And that includes my family and everyone back home I care about as well. I'm WKYT Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey and I stand for Kentucky. 98 won the bull and Hardy's presents the red white and boom music festival 2016 starring Jason Aldean Eric Church Florida Georgia line Thomas Red Cole Swindell Casey Musgraves and many more powered by the Lexington Clinic Labor Day weekend September 2nd through the 4th at the Whitaker Bank Ballpark Lexington tickets on sale now at redwhiteandboom.com the hottest name in late night is talking to the biggest names in politics. I'm like a kid in a candy store. Who's paying for the candy? I... <laughs> the Late Show with Stephen Colbert. This is the first interview that we've had. That's true. I was yeah, playing a character right. who did not care for you. I can say it now. It was mutual. <laughs> Where newsmakers make news. I've said a few things about you over the years. Oh, some nice things. Oh, no. Not too much. <laughs> Weeknights, only CBS. There's an attack in progress on Six and Bell. That's my MetaHuman app. Yeah. You know, get the little ringtone on there. Mm -hmm. He's basically drowning people in tar. Like a walking tar pit. Mm, too slow. Bring you flash and speed. <laughs> I wasn't fast enough. The Flash, all of this Tuesday at 8, 7 central on The CW. Every morning is an eye-opening morning on CBS This Morning. Start with responsible, intelligent information 
and conversation. Take me back to that moment that we just saw in this confrontation. Searchers race to save people trapped for days in Colorado. In an interview you'll see only on CBS This Morning. Start with world-class original reporting. Start thinking. CBS This Morning. WKYT First Alert Weather is brought to you by Cartown Kia. Now, your hour by hour forecast with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. It's a chilly evening wrapping up across central and eastern Kentucky. It's the final weekend of January. It should be chilly out there, but we're going to warm it up over the next couple of days. But comparatively speaking, to the same point last night, because I was showing you red on the map last night, I said tonight I'd show you some blue. Well, here's your proof. Temperatures are roughly 10 degrees colder than at the same point last night. An unlucky 13 degrees colder into Danville, 28 degrees into Danville. Wayne County, you're 22 degrees. Everybody else, several degrees above that. 28 again, Daniel, 27 in the Whirlin Sterling of Mount Sterling, 31 degrees into Lexington. Nothing going on precipitation wise across the entire area. I like that radar picture so much. We're going to play it again all day tomorrow. It's going to be on loop every hour on the hour. With temperatures that'll be into the upper 50s to near 60 by tomorrow afternoon with a mix of sun and some clouds. Brand new hour by hour forecast is in to break down the weekend. If you got something uh, to do outdoors, watch our timeline here. Pick out the hour, pick out the location nearest you, and you're going to get the nice conditions. Plenty of sunshine. Still going to maintain those numbers on the computers tomorrow are too low. We're going above those 55 to 60 into most areas. Quick drop though with dry air tomorrow evening, but we will see thermometers recover into the 40s by Sunday morning. Clouds are going to increase on Sunday. Sunday is still a very nice day. Temperatures are pushing close to 60. It's just we'll have to find a little more cloud cover than what we have tomorrow. And by Sunday evening, rain is pressing in across the region. Could be some heavy downpours to start out the day on Monday. That is a cold front that settles its way through the region with temperatures still not bad at all. 46 Covington yet mid-50s across the south. Those 50s are going to win the battle. That front's going to head back to the north as a warm front. That'll set the stage for a return of warm and for early February standards. Juicy air coming from the Gulf of Mexico. That's a bad thing. Good thing for the mild temperatures. May make a run towards 70 if we can get any sunshine at all on Groundhog Day. Could break a record. The problem with all that is you've got a big push of cold air not too far away from us in the Plain States. Sandwiched in between is going to be a very strong area of low pressure. Behind that low, we're going to get a blizzard from the Plain States into the Western Great Lakes. Out ahead of that, though, we have the risk for some strong or severe thunderstorms that will develop to our west and southwest. And then the latest computer models are suggesting as this front gets into western and central Kentucky, Tuesday afternoon and evening, we may see thunderstorms really take off here with the potential for some damaging winds and severe thunderstorms. Cold winds would then blow maybe a flurry or a snow shower into town later Wednesday as temperatures drop. So keep a very close eye on that Tuesday forecast. High winds and the threat for strong and severe thunderstorms. That will be with us. We've had Tuesday uh, marked in red to indicate a higher threat level for active conditions. And that is exactly what we continue to see for your Groundhog Day. Look at the numbers behind that. They drop quickly and the coldest is yet to come. We get past Tuesday. February is going to be a very cold and wintry month. All right, We haven't seen the last of the snows by any means. We just got to get through Tuesday. Tuesday is going to be an active day. In the meantime, Saturday. Saturday, yep. Sunday. Enjoy Sunday. it. Soak it up. <laughs> Thanks. Well, some people in Lexington will be sweating all night, but it is for a really good cause. That's right. Sweat for Surgeries is a 24-hour fitness event that kicked off tonight at Aspire Fitness on West Tiverton Way. Circuit training classes will be going on nonstop until <laughs> 6 tomorrow night. The proceeds help surgery on Sunday, which provides outpatient surgeries for people who are underinsured. We, uh, we had a goal of 20,000, which would fund 66 surgeries for surgery on Sunday. And right now we're at about 17,500. So we're only about 2,500 short of our goal, which is great. So it will help so many of our patients. Amber, we should have signed up. Way awesome. We like to work out. Yeah. Organizers also want to break the Guinness World Record for longest circuit training. Good luck to them mm. tonight, right? Brian and Lee Kay are next with all of tonight's high school basketball highlights in game time. Choosing a college is about setting a course. 
a path that leads to your destination. At EKU, the adventure is what lies in between. Eastern Kentucky University. Great journeys begin here. Don't miss Logan's huge inventory clearance sale going on now with storewide savings on all fall and winter merchandise up to 70% off. Our entire stock of name brand suits and sport coats is now up to 60% off. All fall and winter sportswear is reduced up to 60% off. Cashmere blend top coats are now $159. Hundreds of dress and casual slacks are now 50 to 60% off. Famous maker ties are now 50 to 70% off. All cold on shoes are now 30% off. It's our huge inventory clearance sale going on now at Logan's in the Tate's Creek Center. It's official. Green's Toyota of Lexington is Kentucky's number one Toyota dealer for the fourth year in a row. We're celebrating all month long with amazing deals on our entire inventory. 0% APR on Toyota's most popular models. 1.9% APR on all certified pre-owned Toyotas. Plus, save $5,000 off MSRP on new Toyotas with our Green Saver coupon. Come in and let us show you our appreciation for making us Kentucky's number one Toyota dealer. Great people. Great cars. Great Green's. Locally owned for over 30 years. Locally owned for over 40 years. What's the secret? Going above and beyond for your patients. Knowing the people you help each and every day. Caring about your neighbors. That's what being a good neighbor pharmacy is all about. Locally owned. Locally operated. Locally loved. Get to know your neighbor at mygnp.com. Visit Good Neighbor Pharmacy in Danville or Holbrook Drug in Moorhead. Standing for Kentucky means being proud of where you come from and being proud of where we're headed. Kentucky's history, present, and future have a common theme, hard work. It took hard work to get here, and we Kentuckians know it will take hard work to get us through tomorrow. At WKYT, we're proud to tell the stories of everyday Kentuckians who aren't afraid to get their hands a little dirty to make this a better place to live. WKYT stands for Kentucky. Every family has one member. I'm a professional nerd. <laughs> Who says whatever's on their mind. Name something your wife has that's bigger than yours. My wife gotta have a big old butt. Oh! <laughs> or else this ain't going down. I can't do it. it got to have a bigger butt. Family Feud, one full hour starting at 7 on the CW Lexington. Welcome into this edition of WKYT Game Time. I'm Brian Milam. He is Lee King Howard III. We have plenty of high school action. Plus, we will give you a preview of that big UK Kansas game tomorrow. It is a big game. And former Bryan Station great Michael Allen is in his first season with Tate's Creek. And the Commodores have just struggled a bit. The Creekers have won just three games this season. Tonight, they host Lexington Catholic. The Knights hammered Creek by 32 just a couple of weeks ago. The teams were tied at 27 at the half. In the third, Zan Payne cuts back door for the up and under to give Catholic the lead. A game high 21 for Payne. Dakota Fay goes baseline, gets the tough layup to go off the glass. Fay had 13. Catholic would begin to pull away. Luke Johnson lobs it up to Peter Whitman for the lay-in. Knights, well, they top Tate's Creek once again, 69 to 55. Now we go to Harrodsburg, where in a town known for high school football, it's the local basketball team making a lot of noise. Mercer County, a perfect 22-0, the lone unbeaten team in Kentucky. Tonight, the Titans hosting East Jessamine. An issue with the team bus for East Jess got them to the gym late, but they came out ready just late. Three for Michael Hammond. And then inside to Brandon Pitney, the Jags are hanging around, trailing just 27-21. But then here come the Titans. Dylan James, part of the James gang. Three straight away, good. Then going inside to the horse. And he is a bad dude. Malik Dow, great spin move. He puts it in. Huge second half for Mercer County. Titans 23 0, 85 44. Bitter rivals squaring off tonight at Clark County. The Cardinals hosting Montgomery County. And 
Love a lot of uh, fun students there. <laughs> First quarter, cards in transition. Brian Milam was in that student section, by the way. Giles Anderson drives and draws the D and drops it off to Jordan Graham for the layup. Clark County up by six. My Indians God. come roaring back. Caswell Fuller, the elbow, the blow by. He takes the contact, goes glass and gets the call. And then it's Buckets. Fuller again. Crossover. He's just going to do whatever he wants to out there. Mercer, no surprise, wins again. They're good. 63-48. Over in Richmond, Madison Central hosting Trinity. The Rocks coming off a home court loss to Henry Clay. Entertaining fourth quarter. Dakota Begley going into the trees and scores. The Rocks rally. Trinity's Brendan King. The interception. And then the pass to David Johnson. Central by one. King will then spot the Rocks sharpshooter. Gabriel Schmidt all alone. 48-47 Trinity under a minute to go. Back the other way, John Williams to Begley. The shot counts on the goaltending. 50 to 48, five seconds left. Williams missed the first, hits the second free throw. Trinity, a chance to tie. They go to Schmidt. Three, no. And they storm the court at Madison Central. Central wins at 51-48. That was a fun game, folks. That's gonna be a fine. We head to Frankfurt. <laughs> it's Franklin County in Western Hills. The Flyers wearing Pink tonight for breast cancer awareness. 16-14 Franklin County. Third quarter now Diablo Stewart. A little string music, as Joe Dean would say, in the capital city. Flyers by six. Back on this in Western Hills, Dylan Jones. The drive to the hole and one cuts the lead to three. Stewart behind the back dime to Demarcus Kennedy. Franklin County wins it 48 to 36. Also in Frankfurt, the boys all A quarterfinals. It's Danville and Newport Central Catholic. First quarter, it's Jacoby Turner. The drive, the soup and the sandwich. <laughs> Turner with five. The ads breaking the full court pressure here. Matthew Turner left open. He, there he is. Nope, there he is. Nope, there he is. Knocks down the three ball. Adds by a point. Danville in on the break. Jared Sutherland going to miss this layup, but fights for the board, pads his stats, the putback, and the foul. Newport Central Catholic advances with a 61 to 44 win. I know the AD over Madison Central. There will be no fine. More from the All A. It's Morgan County and Owen County, two of the state's best players going at it. Carson Williams, one of the state's leading scorers, and Jordan Perry, first quarter. Williams leading the break, gives to Blaine Forsey. Williams with 29 points, three assists at the other end. Perry with the bounce. He had 37. Williams and company too tough. Here's Michael Dunaway. Going to get loose inside. He's a big, he's a big boy. You can't miss him. Owen County to the semifinals, 64-58. Back in Richmond, Bourbon County and Model and the Patriots. They've got a big guy inside. His name is Alex Chin. Nice little fade away from about 14 feet out. Pretty good moves from the big fella. Bourbon County does the same. You want some money? You go to the guy who's Titus Ransom. Mid-range jumper rattles in. The Colonels usually a little height themselves. Billy Orcutt, former receiver, now center, puts it in. Bourbon County has won two of their last three, 72 to 60. At Anderson County, the Bearcats hosting South Oldham. First half, Bearcats go inside to Gunnar Gillis. Great. Yeah, that makes the lead seven. And then how about the three-pointers? They started dropping and the lead started growing. Dylan Pittman going to knock down back-to-back -back three pointers, first from the wing, then from the top of the key. Kobe. Kobe Penny, same spot, same result. <laughs> it's a three. Rattles around. All Anderson County tonight, 73 to 44. The highlights continue after this timeout. Up next, it's ladies' night on game time. WKYT's High School Game Time is brought to you by Eastern Kentucky University. Choosing a college is about setting a course, a path that leads to your destination. At EKU, the adventure is what lies in between. Eastern Kentucky University. Great journeys begin here. I moved to Kentucky about 20 years ago and didn't know a soul. And one of the first things that stood out to me was how welcoming the people were. They came up to me, they introduced themselves, they said, you're going to love Kentucky. And you know what? I did. And I am proud to say that Kentucky is my home. When we say WKYT stands for Kentucky, it means that we care about the people and places that make this state so special. I'm WKYT's Jennifer Palumbo, and I stand for Kentucky. 
Saturday's Powerball jackpot is $96 million. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Lexington Overstock Warehouse is having our huge annual floor model sale. Don't miss this opportunity to grab new furniture and mattresses at a fraction of store prices. Save up to 80% off select display models. Come early to get your best selection. LexingtonOverstockWarehouse.com. Get weather plus traffic with a WKYT weather app. Have the Defender Radar Network in the palm of your hand while checking your driving conditions for your commute on the same screen. Weather plus traffic on the WKYT weather app. There's an attack in progress on Six and Bell. That's my MetaHuman app. Yeah. You know, got the little ringtone on there. Mm -hmm. He's basically drowning people in tar. Like a walking tar pit. Mm, too slow. Bring you the flash of speed. I wasn't fast enough. The Flash, only this Tuesday at 8, 7 central on The CW. Win $10,000 at Toyota on Nicholasville and pay off your holiday bills. Test drive any new Toyota before March 1st and you'll be entered to win $10,000. No purchase necessary. Get 0% for 60 months. New Corollas, only $149 a month. New Camrys, $169 a month. And you could win $10,000 at Toyota. The big Toyota store. Where price sells cars. More specials at toyotaonnicholasville.com. At the end of the broadcast, I'm most proud of what we have done as a team. This is the ultimate team sport, television news. And all of the people that have contributed to that night's broadcast, people who have risked their lives to tell the news and to deliver to the American people the highest quality news broadcast in the world today. That is a very satisfying feeling. Welcome back. Into game time, we turn our attention now to girls basketball. We start with a pretty good matchup over in Georgetown. It was a good one. A district game tonight at Scott County. Second meeting of the year between Scott County and Henry Clay. Now, the Blue Devils have won seven of their last nine. Steve Helton's Lady Cards have won four of their last five. Six of their last eight. They're undefeated in district play, but could they get the regular season sweep? I don't we'll have the answer they? in about 20 seconds. Second quarter, Henry Clay down one. Kira Thompson dials it in from the corner. Henry Clay takes the lead. Scott County inbounding the ball. Alexis Locker catches and fires. 17-14, Lady Cardinals. Henry Clay then intercepts the pass. Thalea Livers takes it the other way. You heard the whistle. The layup and the foul. She finished with 21. Henry Clay gets the win, 71-54. Franklin County, the favorite to repeat as 11th region champs. The Flyers are unbeaten in district play tonight, hosting Western Hills, a team they whipped by 30 at the beginning of the month. Second quarter, we'll go to the highlights. Franklin County all over the Lady Wolverines again. Western Hills will go inside. Taylor Slade uses the window for two. The Flyers are up by 22, though. Off the screen, Franklin County's Anna Arastia. They never get it right. Knocks down the 15-footer. Franklin County, 68 to 53. Well, at least you tried. You gave it, you gave it your, your A effort. Aristide. Speaking of A, girls all A action from the Civic Center in Frankfurt. Frankfurt and uh, Harlan in a quarterfinal matchup. Second quarter off the steal. That was Kaylee Tillman. She drives in for the layup. And let's keep it rolling. Frankfurt's Brianna Burbridge is the state's second leading scorer at 31 points a game. She had 48 in the Panthers' opening round win, but she was held to a mere 21 points tonight. Harlan knocks out Frankfurt 67 to 50 in that one. Look at Jordan Brock though, 39. 10th region rivalry game. The best one, I think, Montgomery County and Clark County. Delaney Bromage at three. A little string music in Winchester KY. Now to the fourth, Lady Indians. Hey, she's gonna do it again. But the Lady Cards, a shot to tie at the horn. And it's no good. A couple of weeks ago, John High lost to them at home. And guess what? Montgomery County, they go on the road to do it 56. 53. Two of the most storied college basketball programs meet up tomorrow. A preview of Kentucky and Kansas is next on Game Time. Hi, I'm Stephen Colbert. And I'm James Corden. And I'm the host of The Late it's Show. It's not enough time. CBS Late Night is on a roll. We're just two cool dudes who are ready to take comedy head on. <laughs> 
The Late Show with Stephen Colbert and The Late Late Show with James Corden. The cutting edge in late night. Colbert! Corden! Late Show! Late Late Show! Still not there! Weeknights, only CBS. <laughs> Did your family set a goal to become healthier in the new year? One family did and lost 300 pounds at Ageless. Bruce lost 92 pounds, Adam lost 64 pounds, and Catherine lost 151 pounds. For a medically supervised affordable weight loss solution, call Ageless today for a free consultation. When winter is at its worst, that's when WKYT calls a first alert severe weather day. Keeping your family safe with the power of the Defender Radar Network and the entire first alert weather team, plus continuous coverage on air on WKYT.com and wherever you are with our news and weather apps. Because when the snow starts falling, it takes an experienced team to stand for you when the weather gets tough. First alert severe weather days, only on WKYT. Have you ever heard of floating to relax? An NBA star does it, and now you can in Lexington. You essentially can't see anything. WKYT's Sam Dick shows you a new way to unwind in a hectic world. Floating to relax, Monday at 6 on WKYT. 98 won the Bull and Hardy's presents the Red, White, and Boom Music Festival 2016. Starring Jason Aldean. Country. Eric Church. Florida Georgia Line, Thomas Red, Cole Swindell, Casey Musgraves, and many more. Powered by the Lexington Clinic. Labor Day weekend, September 2nd through the 4th at the Whitaker Bank Ballpark, Lexington. Tickets on sale now at redwhiteandboom.com. Mondays are golden on the CW. Yay! That is so true. Gina Rodriguez is the 2015 Golden Globe winner, and Rachel Bloom is the 2016 Golden Globe winner for Best TV Comedy Actress. So, who's crazy now? Don't miss the CW's award-winning Leading Ladies of Comedy. We are good person. You duplicitous minx. Crazy Ex-Girlfriend and Jane the Virgin, all new Monday starting at 8, 7 central on The CW. I grew up in Harlem, but I've lived in Lexington since graduating from UK, and it's given me a real appreciation for what it means to stand for Kentucky. Whether it's a big city or a small town, the people of Kentucky want our state to succeed. And we here at WKYT want to do our part to share the stories of difference makers who make our state a better place to live. I'm WKYT's Barbara Bailey, and I stand for Kentucky. When big news breaks, be the first to know. Download the WKYT News app and turn on push alerts. Breaking news at your fingertips when you need to know what's going on. Get WKYT news and weather updates on Mix 94.5. UK and KU, Kentucky and Kansas, two teams who have a distinct home court advantage, but tomorrow's game is at the fabled Fog Allen Fieldhouse in Lawrence. Now, Kansas currently has a 34 game home winning streak. Kentucky's marks at 32, but earlier today, John Calipari just gushing about the accomplishments of Jayhawks coach Bill Self. You know, we want to talk about his, the home record Bill has. How about he has won more league championships than losses at home? I mean, what are you talking about? So, and it's Kentucky and Kansas. I mean, like you're saying, everybody, it's, it's going to be a hyped game. And uh, we're, we're finally starting to do some stuff. We're finally starting to become a team that I'm like, okay, it looks like somebody I coach. Should be a good one. It's Kentucky and Kansas, 7 o'clock. You can see it tomorrow night on ESPN. Now here's Matt Jones with his take on the big game. It's a big day tomorrow in Lawrence as two of the most historic programs in college basketball play for the first time in one of their home courts in about a decade. Now for Kentucky, I think this is a game where they got nothing to lose. Nobody expects them to win and they're an underdog for one of the few times in the Calipari era. But they are playing so much better that I do think they have a chance. Right now with Derek Willis in the lineup, it's a different team. But Kansas is very experienced. When people ask me how Kansas plays, think about Kentucky, but maybe a little bit better. They like to go small, they spread the court, they shoot from the outside, and they use penetration lanes. I actually think the key matchup is going to be at the two guard. Wayne Selden for Kansas has had a good year, but still really hasn't hit the potential that I think he had out of high school. And to me, for Kentucky to win, Jamal Murray's got to play big. There's going to have to be a moment in the game when it's so loud in Allen Fieldhouse that you can't even hear yourself think. Murray's going to have to step up and hit a big shot and shut the crowd up. I'm Matt Jones. This has been Overtime.
You know, John Calipari talks about Bill Self with more conference titles than home losses. Well, Cal's been to the Final Four just as many times as he's lost at Rupp Arena. Advantage Calipari. Yeah, Calipari trying to set up Self. Self, it's going to be a good game. I promise you. Both teams are ready for this one. It should be a good one. 7 o'clock tomorrow night, ESPN. And, of course, we'll have the highlights for you at 11 o'clock right here on WKYT. Thanks for joining us once again for game time. And we'll see you right back here tomorrow night. Have a good night.